Hello, my name is Alicia. In 2008, my son Mako was born by emergency caesarean. He had myconium aspiration, lack of oxygen to the brain and was sent to Princess Margaret Hospital where he had three seizures on his first night and was in intensive care. He had a small bleed on his brain and ended up with a virus of some kind, possibly meningitis, and was given a few different kinds of antibiotics, one of them being gendermycin, which can cause hearing loss. After spending six weeks at Princess Margaret Hospital, Mako was ready to come home but failed his first hearing test. We had regular checkups at Princess Margaret Hospital and we were later told that Mako had mild to moderate hearing loss in both ears. He got his first pair of hearing aids when he was six months old. It was hard work trying to get him to keep them in. At this time we lived in Durian Bay and we would come to Perth every few weeks to attend appointments for audio, speech, Australian hearing, as well as physio and optometrist. I would speak to all these specialists about how he was going and what I could do to help him. I'd also talk to the specialists on behalf of Mako about anything his teachers would report to me on how he was doing at school. I must say I've been very happy with all the help we have received from Mako over the years. All our experiences have been really positive. I'm very grateful to the doctors, specialists and teachers who have helped us. Eventually when Mako was in year one we moved to Spearwood where Mako went to Newton Primary. Here he had a lot more help and support. He had a hearing teacher named Jane Sutherland from SENS come and visit him once a week. She was excellent. We would speak to each other on a regular basis about how Mako was going. It was actually Jane who first noticed Mako's hearing was getting worse and we started to notice it also. Then tests at Australian Hearing showed that his left ear had started to deteriorate a fair bit. Then when the audiologist mentioned about possibly getting a cochlear implant for Mako, I was a little worried and unsure. After a few meetings and discussions with Jane and the audiologist and all the positive feedback from them, I was happy to go through with the procedure. When I spoke to Mako about it, he was more than happy to get a cochlear implant. Then last year on the 31st of August, he went in for surgery. He recovered very well and not once complained. Again, I could not be happier with the doctors, nurses and staff at the Perth Children's Hospital. Then on the 14th of September, he had his cochlear implant switched on. I'll now pass you over to Mako. Hi, Hi. my name is Mako. When I was really little, I would often pull my hearing aids out, but once I realised how much they had helped me to hear a lot, a lot better, I liked to wear them all the time. My hearing teacher Jane was very nice and I enjoyed her coming and helping me at school. This year I have a new hearing teacher named Gemma. She is also very nice and I, and I, had, and I met a few kids at the Lighthouse School with cochlear implants. So when Mum and Jane spoke to me about getting one, I knew what they were talking about and felt okay. <coughs> and felt okay getting one myself. When I got a cochlear, when I got the cochlear switched on, everything sounded kind of robotic at first. And then I didn't really like, like it so much. But now that I have, have got used to, to it, I think it is great. I also have a special aqua kit that goes over it so I can wear it in the water and pull. I've, I've got a, I'm going to the WA Foundation of Deaf Children events because I met, because I get to meet every kid with hearing aids and cochlear implants. I can't wait to, to go on one of the camps. They look like a lot of fun. I'm also really looking forward to going to Shenton College for high school. When I grow up, I would like to be a motion capture animator for cartoons and video games. I would also like to help other pit, um, children with hearing loss. Thank you very much for listening to my story.